Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about some of the top in demand and highest paying jobs in tech that you can do from home. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. As always, shout out to some of you wonderful subscribers here. Thank you for your questions, your comments, your feedback. As always, you all just mean the world to me. So thank you. I love the community that we are building and that is why I always shout out uh, some of you every video. Okay, let's get started. I am sure so many of you have been there before where you are dreaming of working from anywhere in the world, being a digital nomad, being able to travel when you want, uh, make your own schedule, any of the above. It can sound pretty amazing and also too, almost like a dream. But in reality, it is completely possible nowadays, especially in the tech industry. There are so many different diverse roles that offer flexibility to travel, to work remote. Basically, all you need is a computer and some Wi-Fi. Once you have those two things, a lot of these jobs can be done from anywhere in the world. Since the pandemic though, even more companies have become more and more flexible with allowing and encouraging remote work. A lot of companies have now updated their systems or processes that allow for more flexible work, that this dream of being able to work wherever, have more of a flexible schedule is now becoming a reality for many. Today I'm going to dive right in and share with you some of the top jobs for working remote in the tech industry, as well as kind of a range of salary. Obviously these salaries can be way higher or lower depending on where you live, uh, what company you work for, your experience prior, how many years you've been in the industry, but I'm going to gather all this information around salary from levels.fyi. It's a super reliable source, especially for major uh, tech companies. Okay, let's get started. The first one on the list, and I'm sure there is no surprise here, is software developer. Yes, this is, as you know, what I do for a living for nine to five, and it's one of those jobs that can be extremely flexible, both in schedule, in location, and obviously pretty much every company needs a software developer. So even to in where or who you work for, or maybe you want to freelance and work for yourself. Software developers can really set their own schedules depending on the company. Maybe there are certain hours that you need to be online, but for the most part, you are working independently. Of course, you're interacting with different designers, quality assurance, product managers, but you can kind of have the flexibility of setting specific hours. And the average salary for a software developer, according to levels.fyi, this is also based out of San Fran, please keep that in mind, is 160,000 US dollars. The total salary package, which includes bonus, stock, and base salary, is the medium of 240,000 US dollars. But keep in mind, that is total package, not base salary. So as you can see, software developer is not only a very lucrative career, but it's one of those careers that allows for freedom and flexibility that you can do essentially anywhere in the world, as long as you have a computer and Wi-Fi. Back to that, that's all we need now. The next one on the list is UX designer. I am very horrible at UX and UI design, but I have so much respect for anyone who has a good eye for it. I think it's so difficult or one of the hardest jobs, and that's clearly because I don't have the skills for it, but it's a very in-demand job. Uh, the, you know, the rate for hiring UX designers is continuing to climb higher and higher, and it's another job that you can do from absolutely anywhere in the world. A lot of times UX designers have to do quite a bit of research, which would entail doing more Zoom or kind of virtual calls with different potential uh, users to really get better at understanding as to what they are hoping for, how they use the product, different things like that to do further research. So although this job is extremely flexible and something that you can do from essentially anywhere, it does require quite a bit of uh, back and forth between different kind of people or groups when you are doing research. Okay, let's look up what a product designer typically makes. And yes, I'm saying product designer because levels.fyi doesn't do specifically UX designer, but essentially the same thing. Let's see what they say. Okay, according to levels.fyi for San Francisco, 
The base salary is once again, 160,000 US. The medium salary package for product designers is 230,000 US dollars. And as I just mentioned, that is not the base that includes bonus and stock as well, but it's still a very cushy job. And I think it's a really exciting job. So if, you know, d diving into the minds of potential users, doing some research and really having a strong understanding of end users and product design is something you are interested in. I think this is a really great career path. It's one of those things that you can work for a company or freelance and both ways have a very successful career. The next one I want to talk about is online educator. And this is something that I find very interesting because it's something that you can do as kind of on the side of what you are doing for your nine to five, but also to you could do full time and there's really no specific uh, salary cap on it. It depends on what you are teaching, how many courses you are putting out. So an online educator essentially is teaching different online courses to different viewers. You could be making courses for Udemy, for YouTube, for what are some other really good ones? Udemy is the first one that comes to mind. I have some friends who are software developers and they've actually made the shift to making some courses on Udemy. They get a percentage of whatever courses sell and it's a great way to, you know, a lot of people who make these courses do it full time or to have it part time. I can't give a specific range in salary because it varies so greatly depending on how much time and effort you are putting in and how many courses you are putting out but it is another great option to do from pretty much anywhere in the world. And with this one, I think it's great because it is more freelance style and it, you really can set your own hours. The next job on the list is quality assurance. This can be a quality assurance analyst or manager level, but really anything under the QA umbrella is something that you can do remotely. I know for me, I work with a lot of wonderful people who do QA that are based out of everywhere in the world from india the states brazil so many places i work with uh, virtually different people who do qa from different parts of the world quality assurance roles can really differentiate depending on what the company is asking for but essentially it involves designing uh, building and really engineering different testing systems for the software so for example, you might be testing uh, specific parts of a website or a mobile app or whatever the software is, and this can be done both uh, with manual or building different tests. Usually it's a bit of both. Levels.fyi does not have a quality assurance manager salary, so I'm going to check on skillcrush.com, which is another great resource, and their average salary reporting is $74,000. So, other than the other ones I spoke about where I also gave a medium salary package, so bonus and also two stock options, this does not include any of that. It's just the base salary, which is 74,000 uh, US. The next one on the list is something that prior to the pandemic was a role that was typically done in person for most companies, which is product manager. And a product manager essentially is the engine behind the or keeps the team, or what is that saying? I don't know what the saying is, but keeps the team well-oiled, moving forward, making sure people are held accountable to what they're working on, that the client is happy, that the product is actually being built. There is a lot of responsibility that goes into being a product manager. Product managers are a role in technology that you don't necessarily have to come from a tech background or have coding or any of those kind of uh, technical skill experience. It's something though that as you continue to grow in your product manager career, will come that having knowledge at, at least of a very base level of what you know some different coding best practices are or technologies are, are very, is very key to success for product managers but to get into the industry and to get into product manager as a role, you don't need to have hard technical skills, just more a curiosity and willingness to learn. Let's see what it says on Levels FYI for product manager. That's my drum roll, it's kind of horrible. Okay, base salary based out of San Fran for product manager is 181,000 US dollars. The medium salary package is $268,000. So that includes a 36,000 bonus and a $50,000 stock grant yearly. 
So as you can see, being a product manager is a wealth, literal wealth of benefits. And it has so many different career opportunities that can come your way from it. I've worked with some incredible product managers over the course of my career. And I can tell you firsthand, one of my favorite things uh, about working with product managers or the product managers that I enjoy working with the most are definitely the ones that have that curiosity and want to learn more about technology have a base understanding of coding. And once again, they maybe never written that much code in their life, but when you're speaking to them, you feel as a developer, like you can speak to them and they'll understand, you know, the concepts you were talking about at a very high level. And it just makes everything kind of flow more smoothly when they understand what you are working on and the time it will take to work on it. And um, it's just, it's more better that way. So they're really awesome. And I think it's a great career path if you are someone who wants to get into the tech industry, but might not want to actually be coding or doing the actual technical work. Next on the list is technical program manager. And a technical program manager is pretty similar to, I would say a product manager, but what they specialize in is managing the development of the project from beginning to end. Technical program managers really are with the project from the very beginning, the very first idea, the budding idea, to the very end of the project. They work closely with the designers, the developers, but also to interact very closely. If it's a client facing project, they will interact with the client quite a bit or upper management. Technical program managers must have a strong understanding of the technology capabilities that the team has, that the company has, to ensure when they are talking to the client or upper management that what they are saying or promising can actually be delivered. Okay, let's go back to levels.fyi and see what they are saying. Do, 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 technical program manager. Okay, this is really amazing. So the base salary for a technical program manager is 195,000. The median salary package is 265,000. Stock grant is 50,000 and the bonus is 20,000. Also, it says here that the top paying companies in the San Fran area for technical program managers include Lyft, Airbnb, Uber, Facebook, and Google. No surprise there. Okay, those are some of the top paying jobs in the tech industry. Well, I shouldn't just say, yeah, they are some of the top, but there are so many more that pay equally, if not even higher. It's one of those things that as you get more skilled and experienced in the tech industry, you will continue to see those bonuses, see those stock options continue to rise. And as the whole point of this video is, there are jobs that you can do from anywhere. It's pretty exciting to me to be living in a time where gone are the days of sitting in a cubicle, working nine to five and punching out the clock. A lot of times when that would happen, I feel like no one really works for eight hours from nine to five. So, and I think a lot of employers are starting to recognize that and realizing that rather than focusing on how many hours in a day are spent at work or working on something, how many quality hours are put into the day? What is the output? What are the employees actually producing rather than expecting them to stare at a screen for eight hours if they were done their task four hours ago? And of course, it's not completely there yet that we can just make our own hours. I wish it was, but gotta have some standardization. Uh, but being able to be flexible, uh, working from anywhere, working, you know, on a beach, that sounds so nice, but I feel like I wouldn't get anything done. But just having that option is really nice and I wanted to share with you some of the top paying jobs to hopefully encourage you that this can be possible for you too if you are someone who is interested in becoming a digital nomad, working remotely, working anywhere in the world. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you find it valuable and inspiring for where you can go with your career in tech. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos, and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.